Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mysteries and Disappearances video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's wrap up this series here. I've done a small handful of these videos along with some new video dedicated to that book that I'm reading involving mysteries and disappearances. So I'm going to wrap up this playlist here and then start focusing on a whole new playlist. This one has to do with something that I found on a list of disappearances that were before 1970. The reason this one caught my eye is because it has to do with the disappearance of a balloonist. So this was someone who was a balloon pilot, someone who was fascinated with the popularity, at least at that time, of hot air balloons. And it was on their last trip that they basically disappeared into thin air. So lots of interesting things to share here. Maybe those of you that are in Cuba know more information on a local level. It has to do with this. You're looking at a representation of him now. His name was Matias Perez. So let's go ahead and let's share all the this fascinating but brief info and then I'll give my own thoughts and opinions again those of you that are local please post those comments below because there's apparently a common saying there in Cuba that relates to this disappearance so Matias Perez was someone who was Portuguese born but lived in Cuba I don't have the exact dates on when he was essentially born but he basically lived there most of his life in fact at one point he decided to go to an area involving businesses about selling canopies and then awnings as well. He was so successful at it that he became known as the king of the canopies. So that's a good reputation to have, right? Obviously, you have to have a good business along those lines, have good business showmanship to be able to have that kind of title, especially back then when you have nothing like TV or radio or anything else um, um, doing that work for you. It's basically all word of mouth. But as it turns out, Mr. Matias Perez used this for some success when he was more interested in aeronautics. This was at the time when there was the popularity associated with hot air balloons. This was an ever-increasing popularity People were becoming fascinated by it, about the idea that they could use these for both short and long trips. And in fact, he was someone that ended up working and then buying a balloon from a French pilot by the name of Eugene Goddard. So they developed a friendly relationship. And then in fact, at one point, they decided to take a flight together from Havana. And this was back on May 21st, 1856. So again, he used this experience to be able to build his repertoire. It turns out, though, he only had three flights. The third flight was the one that was the infamous one, but the other ones, uh, he was still building his repertoire, and again, he was utilizing Eugene Goddard for it. In fact, it was Goddard again who gave him his famous balloon. Apparently, it was called Vie de Paris, City of Paris. This was a balloon that he had personally used throughout many flights over that place, and so he sold it to Matias Perez for 1,200 pesos. I have no idea how much that would be today, but that does seem like that's a lot, at least for back then. Maybe um, uh, Matias Perez against used his success as business and the dollars he earned for that. And then in that part, he was able to use it, although there's been some dispute as to this via the Perez, because it turns out, at least according to an eyewitness report, that that balloon was destroyed by a fire somewhere there in Marseille just a month before Matias Perez disappeared. So whether that was the original balloon or whether he had gained another one, who knows? The whole point was it was definitely coming from him first. Eugene Goddard, and then may or may not have been used in his infamous flight. So as I was saying earlier, he had flown two other flights. In fact, the second flight took place on July 28, 1856, and this was something where it was just a beautiful day. Everything was great. The first flight actually occurred on June 12, 1856. Everything was A-OK -okay with that. So why not go a third place, right? In this case, this would have been also around that time, June 28th, 1856. But as it turns out, there was a strong wind that day. I don't know exactly where he was going to fly to. All I know is that he was getting permission from a captain by the name of Captain General Jose Gutierrez de la Concha, and he was able to use this to be able to fly out. He got that permission, and then he decided to do so at sunset, 7 p.m. So, I don't know if this plays an important part. You would think that something along that late of night, depending on the 
the time zone, um, they could have been something where it's still daytime, or most likely going into the actual darker times, but or nighttime. But he decided to go around that time again, even with the daylight disappearing and with the wind being stronger than reported that day. And then he would disappear. He was never, ever seen again. People saw him ascend. This was again around 7 p.m. But then afterward, he was gone. No one saw him go down. No one saw him land anywhere. Nobody saw anything. This was one of the most strangest things that apparently occurred there in Cuba because a man with all the publicity surrounding his trip and again, the people that no doubt were there and saw him go off, everything there was essentially him disappearing into thin air. And In fact, this became such a popular notion, this, this mysteriousness there, that it became part of Cuba's folklore. Again, those of you on the local level, let me know. But apparently there's a saying there that goes, whenever someone or something disappears or there's mysteriousness associated with a topic, it's usually common to say volo como Matias Perez, meaning he flew away like Matias Perez. I guess it's kind of like here in America when you say he was caught red-handed. Something along those lines where it relates to a person of past times, such as the case here with Matias Perez. His infamous flight and his disappearance is now in Cuban folklore. Even to this very day, people are saying that exact thing. Now, as far as to um, notions as to what occurred, there's the usual things. Maybe his uh, balloon actually had some issues and he crashed somewhere and obviously sight unseen was damaged. He in turn was hurt and then who knows what happened to him afterward or maybe he crashed into somewhere, a body of water and then just essentially just drowned at that point. There's even this, there was a comic series that was released back in 1969 and in it, it was a science fiction adventure. I imagine it was more on the lines of a fantasy side because it was stating that in this case, the pilot, Matias Perez, was actually abducted by an alien race. Not only that, but he was taken away to a very far away planet called Stracom. So this was base, uh, something that was published there on a weekly basis on a magazine called Pionero Magazine. Take it for what you will. I think it was more fantasy. Like it was just tongue-in-cheek stuff. While trying to explain the seriousness of the matter, they were still making it larger than life, just like his character. And so that way, he's living off somewhere in another planet rather than just disappeared and let's say landed somewhere and then his bones are probably just at that place too this very day so why not why not give him a much more grandioso exit than what truly happened afterward but that's it that's pretty much all the information associated with Matias Perez a famous balloonist an aspiring one someone that was growing in popularity and then using the hot air balloons at the time to try to make a name for himself and then just disappeared right into thin air. If anybody has any more info, anything else I might have missed, then please post those comments below. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.